Hey everyone, it's art prof teaching artist Deep D Menon here, and I'm joined with art prof teaching artist Alex Rowe and Prof Lou herself. Welcome everybody, thank you for joining us. Today our stream is on art prompts for self-taught artists. We're focusing on 10 minute art prompts to get you guys started. If you are looking to strengthen and flex your art muscle, Art Prof is a community for you. We have tutorials, critiques, and more, and it's all for free. So um, Clara, why don't you get us started? Yeah, this is part of a series of curriculums for self-taught artists that we are moving through. We have done the basics, illustration, we have started doing animation, but this stream is really to get you guys started because the start part is the hardest part. Why is that, Alex? For me, it's so intimidating, especially after like, when I took like the long-ish break, it was so intimidating to just do it. But if you just make it a habit, then it's easier. And the easier you can set yourself up to get it going, that's the best you can do. Like talk about this idea of like leaving out your art supplies. Like what is that about? Deepti, why do you think this might be helpful instead of say putting them in a box, in a drawer, clean up at the end of the day? Just, I have a table just has stuff all over it. <laughs> why does that help jumpstart your practice? Well, you're going to find a million excuses not to start, especially when you're not feeling inspired or feeling up to it. And one great reason not to start is because your materials are put away and it's not right there in front of you. So the whole point of this, I think, series that we're doing in this video, especially is to like quit making excuses and find a way to jump into it. And a huge excuse for me is like, if, if it's out of sight, it's out of mind. So putting your materials there, even if you're into organization, you can have it nicely laid out there. But having them there will force you to pick them up and just use them. Mm -hmm. I had a colleague many years ago, his whole mantra was just start. It was like Nike, you know, <laughs> just get started. But it's true. <laughs> so much of the time, that is the hardest part. Tell us in the chat, for those of you guys who are here, do you find the starting part difficult? To me, it's like going to exercise. Once I'm at the gym, I'm at the treadmill, I feel great, but getting to the gym can be really, really hard. So that's what we're trying to teach you guys how to do. And if you want more tips for a home art studio, I would really recommend this stream. Christine Zito is hopping in with a tip or her morning routine. I've developed a routine where I drink water, so my morning wake up, make coffee, and do half hour of sketchbook work before anything else. That helps motivate me for the day. And I that speaks to my soul. Because, yeah, that's exactly it. Like, get yourself to be a little bit of a morning person helps. You can have your private time before anything else is going on. That's just you. We have a comment from Sana K that says, it's always opening up to a blank page that's the most intimidating part. And I think that's a great way to kick us off into some prompts that we have for you because that's so true. You open the thing and you feel energized and you're like, okay, I'm gonna draw, I'm gonna make something. I'm gonna work on something. And then you open it and you're like, oh, I didn't even think about what. And then you start getting frustrated. So the prompts that we're gonna talk about now are really great ways to just get the juices flowing. And then you're guaranteed to maybe even sit there for like three hours and keep working. All right, so we have some prompts that are so insanely simple that it almost seems ridiculous for us to tell you guys to do them, but they're really helpful. Like, why is it fun, Alex, to just make marks and not try to draw something? This one is such a good, not just a good habit for beginners and to loosen you up as you get more skilled in your art. It's really great to fight that blank page looming over you, to just kind of mess around with it, practice your strokes, it intentionally doesn't have to be art. It's not a beautiful thing. It's you playing around and making beautiful marks with it. So this first prompt is just making lines. Vertical lines, start at the top, go down to the bottom. And the directive of this prompt is you try to make as many lines as you possibly can that are as different from each other as possible. It sounds easy, but once you've done about 15 of them, you start realizing, oh my gosh, I really have to start inventing and responding. So like Deep D, you did this when you were a freshman in my drawing class. Did you find this? Well, hopefully you found it helpful. 
I did. I mean, I remember you giving us this prompt and being like, why is she making us do this? This feels like such a waste of my time. But it is true. You know, you're like, I can make thousands of marks with one piece of charcoal. But after like five to 10, you're like, ooh, you know, I'm kind of running out of things to do. And it forces you to think really creatively. But also, like Alex said, there's kind of no pressure on it because all you're doing is creating marks. And the weirder you get and the more absurd you get and like even the worse it looks, the more innovative you're actually being. So um, the possibilities are kind of endless. And in that process, you are discovering so much. You're discovering ways of making different textures. You can even like, for me, I really enjoy this because I see faces and silhouette, like um, what do you call this? Like the silhouette of your profile in a lot of them. And so, I mean, that's just how I think as an animator, but like the possibilities are really endless with something so seemingly kind of simple. Well, so Jackie's saying here, making marks feels like toddler stuff. It can feel that way at first, but I'll tell you, people really learn a lot from this experience because they start thinking about, okay, well, how hard should I press? Which part of the charcoal should I draw with? Should I make this a crazy spastic line? Should I make it a very quiet line? So there's a lot of nuance that can be found in a project like this, and you can change media. Why does that help, Alex, to switch the media in this prompt? Changing media is so key here because it's like it's a common one to have where you're working with charcoal or pastel or something because that can make a lot of diverse marks. But say you're using ballpoint pen, it becomes really challenging to make it a different new line. And you can really start to experiment and push it to the limits. And I think at the end of the day where this really helps you get confidence with your mark making as you're sketching and working on your actual pieces. You know exactly what's going to happen and how to use that tool. Neela's asking, how long are the lines supposed to be? I usually tell students just beginning to end. So if you just keep them all the same, it's one less thing you have to think about. <laughs> then you can just focus a lot more on the mark making. So Charmaine says, part of me is doubtful to start something because I'm afraid to make an ugly artwork. Any suggestions, Deepti? Well, I unfortunately am the queen of loving <laughs> ugly artwork. So you're talking to someone <laughs> who will tell you that you should make ugly artwork because it rocks. Um, <laughs> but I think that the word ugly, first of all, is so subjective. And I think anything that you are putting time into and are having like, an experience making, it's all about the process and what you're learning. It really doesn't matter so much about the end product. And it's really hard to divorce yourself from that mentality about like caring what the last thing will look like, but really put your focus on what you're learning in that journey, because the next time you make something, it's going to look and feel a lot better because you have that experience of what, what you're making now. But also, I, I think a lot of times people think that art should look a certain way. Again, I'm the queen of like not doing this, but you know, think about why your work looks a certain way and why that's ugly to you. And if you can actually find the beauty in that and how you can push that. And I think that'll be really eye opening and fun for you. So this next prompt is basically to help you guys get over that fear of that blank white sheet of paper, which always freaks people out. So what's going on here, Alex, with this ink blot? This was, these happened a lot when I was doing ink where you'll just, in cleaning it out or when squeaking it and spattering it, it just makes exciting, interesting shapes. And from this, while the ink is still wet, I love like converting that into an image in and of itself. And the first person that anyone can think of with this is Ralph Steadman of just these interesting, beautiful spatters and it makes it so rough and alive. And I feel like he's such a good person to look at in this is that thing of this is all just 10 minute practice work. But from that, you can get some really solid ideas that you can flesh out into your final pieces. It's all about getting you into that relaxed mindset. This is such a great comment from Lindsay. For those of you guys who are worried about making, quote, bad artwork, they're saying you don't have to show it to anyone. It's true. I make these crummy drawings and put them away. I mean, who has to even see them? So you have to really lower the stakes, you guys, because I'll tell you, if I had that kind of pressure, I just wouldn't be an artist. 
I wouldn't be able to do anything. It's totally debilitating. So you have to just realize if you guys want to make good work, you got to make a lot of crappy work. That is a requirement. Okay, you guys. Okay, here, we're going to give you a quota. You have to make a certain percentage of very, very bad work all the time. You want to get better. So you're just saying we're fulfilling the R prof quota. See, I'm making progress. <laughs> okay, so next we have a bunch of character prompts for those of you guys who like character design, but honestly, these are great for anybody. So this is a prompt that Kat Huang and Julie Van Bassett did a stream on where you basically take just some random object, whatever, because we have art masking fluid sitting around. And what you do is in your sketchbook, you just trace the outline of the object. And then you create a character out of that I love it. It's so, so cute. So, <laughs> why is this a great way to start a character? Well, it forces you to think about characters in a way that you probably wouldn't if I was like, draw a character. You would think of like a head and a body and all of that. And you probably wouldn't approach the silhouettes in such an unusual way. Um, but it's also really quick. You already have this object here and it forces you not only to just use your technical skill to like trace the object and think of fun, funky objects, but conceptually the possibilities are endless and it's so fun. And again, there's not a lot of pressure when you're doing it. You could do something really intense like Julie or like I would, you could even draw one dot and see what happens. But these are hilarious. Like, come on, look at this one. And also, I think it gets you to do shapes you ordinarily wouldn't do because a lot of us are attracted to a certain type of thing. Deep Dee loves ugly things with warts. And Alex, somehow you always end up in the Victorian era. But this will get you guys to try something that is outside of the norm of what you typically do. All right. Now, Alex, some people like me, I'm not a character designer at all. And the whole concept of it intimidates me. Like, oh God, I got to invent a person from scratch. So why is a self-portrait cartoon a good way to kick that off? I think these are good for two reasons. One is we are the face of the body that we know better than anyone else. So it kind of takes that pressure off and it's you doing it just naturally. Like you know yourself so well and you can express different forms and ideas of yourself through these. It's no pressure. And then two, it's a really good way, knowing that framework, to really experiment with a kind of style and a mood and just kind of loosening up through it. And I want to stress that this is really good whether or not you do cartooning or illustration yourself. Like even if you're a fine artist, I think this is a really fun, loose way to kind of get your mindset. For me, I'm always trying to get back into that mindset of like in high school, just doodling and making comics without a care in the world. You know, you kind of want to get back to that a little bit. Deep D literally just posted this on <laughs> Instagram today, which is to sketch from a selfie. So Deep D, what did you end up doing for this? So I took this selfie on accident and I thought it was really funny. Um, and it was like from a low angle. And I was like, I was looking to fill 10 minutes and create something for this stream. What ended up happening is that I worked on it for like an hour and a half, actually, and I created this self-portrait, which I was also going to note that one of the great reasons that a self-portrait is there is because it doesn't have to look like you. I mean, I wouldn't say that this looks exactly like me, but it's, you know, inspired by me and how I was feeling and the selfie and the angle and stuff. But the great thing about these 10 minute prompts are they could very easily turn into something that is a longer situation and an hour. And we're not saying they have to, but once you're inspired, you know, I'm already working on another one. And, you know, everyone's taking selfies. Everyone's looking at their phone. This one was taken by accident. And I thought it was so great. And I was like, I have to draw this. This is such a funny angle. Um, so, you know, we always talk about drawing from life and using a mirror, but if what's gonna get you going is to work from a photograph and from a selfie and just something that's like right there, do it. Absolutely. It does not have to be so fancy. I know that drawing from life is great. I'm not saying I don't advocate that, but something's better than nothing, right? And look at what you came out with. And oftentimes, a lot of people realize a little bit in, wow, I've been drawing longer than 10 minutes. So Alex, is this really mm -hmm. just about tricking ourselves? <laughs> Honestly, yeah, kind of what we were starting with of how difficult it is to get started, how that's the hardest part of every piece, like just start. 
and for me that's every sketch session is like okay just relax this you only have to sketch for five minutes and then an hour later i'm just really feeling the groove you know so i think that's it it is just kind of tricking your mind into getting some work done ts is saying how come some people have ugly sketchbooks and then another one that is perfect slash beautiful i've had art journals for years but never differentiated. When did this start? Deep D, what's your take on that? Who has perfect, beautiful sketchbooks? I've never seen I one. <laughs> <laughs> I definitely don't. I think we're here to bust the myth, Miss Buster's, Myth Buster's art prof edition that sketchbooks do not look perfect and beautiful. And if you've seen those, I think that they tend to be a little bit less of a sketchbook and maybe more of like a like a pad that they're keeping all of their like longer process work in there. A sketchbook is there for you to sketch and brainstorm and be loose and free. So I think that they should look crazy and ugly. And at the end of the day, what's beautiful and what's what's pretty is so subjective. And I think that a sketchbook that's falling apart at the seams and is like insanity is actually really awesome and beautiful and a whole story and narrative in and of itself. So there should be no pressure on a sketchbook whatsoever. It should totally be free and fun. T.S., if you want to feel better about your sketchbooks, go back and watch my recent sketchbook stream where I showed sketchbooks from the 80s when I was like 10 years old to what I have now. And some of my sketchbooks look like crap. I mean, they really are not impressive. They are not Instagram worthy, but I don't care because they sustain me as an artist. Okay, gesture drawing prompts. Let's review these, obviously, because gesture drawings are supposed to be fast. This naturally fits into this. And for those of you guys who have pets, your pets are always around, right, Alex? <laughs> oh, yeah. I wish you could see her. She's just curled up like a little ball on the couch right now. Yeah. Deep D, have you ever drawn Mirchi, your cat? Oh, my gosh. All the time. And he's, like, the perfect subject because cats are just constantly sleeping. But even when he's, like, kind of crazy and running around, it's fun to try and get those, like, quick ones in. Um, but like you said, you know, they're... Uh, like just as present as you are. So if you don't want to draw yourself, draw your little furry companion. Exactly. I mean, it's they're always around. I can't get rid of them. Well, I don't want to get rid of them. But anyway, <laughs> and we have this video where I went to Lauren's house and I got to know Spicy and Tor. Tor's a big diva. And I just have so much fun doing those. Now, I know a lot of people think, oh, well, if I want to do gesture drawings of the nude human figure, that's a problem because obviously it's quarantine right now. Nobody can go to life drawing. But even then, some people live in places where you just can't get access to that. And so I know there's a lot of websites like Croquis Cafe and Line of Action, and they have like super high resolution images. But I'll tell you, I like these Mewbridge film stills more than those super high res images. Alex, can you guess why I like these more? I think the reason you like these more is because they're not high res and the details aren't all there and it's more focused on that gesture and the movement. Am I right? Yep. <laughs> here's, here's the thing. Orange Cat Spirit is saying, my pets are always moving five animals and they won't sit still. But that's actually, to me, one of the most fun parts of gesture drawing is that you don't really get people holding that still. And I like these Mewbridge images because they really show movement. Like those Crokey Cafe photos, it's somebody posing. So Deep Deep, being the animator, can you tell us what are the advantages of the Mewbridge images? Well, yeah, so the, the whole point of these is to break down moving images. And it's like a really wonderful way of actually understanding what animation is or what film is. And it's like every single frame basically of a movie. So for this horse one, you actually really get to see the gait of a horse and how their legs move. And every single frame is one piece of an entire movement. And the cool thing is that actually, if you do every single one of these, you could photograph them and make an animation and it'll be moving. So that's mm -hmm. a very cool thing that I just remembered is you could do like 10 frames of a Moybridge sequence gesturally and then photograph them on I stop motion and you'll have a little looping maybe animation. So try that. But like that, that's what's wonderful about Moybridge is like literally it's all about motion. I mean, you can see on the book title and you can find so many camel, human, like just so many movements. It's, it's, it's endless. 
Yeah, and the other thing is that you don't have to buy the book. You can just look up Mewbridge and you'll find photos on Google left and right, but the book is awesome. It's so long. There's just thousands, like you guys will never run out of subject matter. It's people doing really random things like woman picking up a bucket. It's, it's so cool. It's a great reference. We just got a shout out from Basil watching the stream. I hope this stream will help inspire me a bit. I haven't had any drawings or ideas for weeks. And yeah, that's entirely the goal, finding these cool things and waiting and getting those sketchbooks live and just keeping your eyes open for things that will inspire you. All right, Deep D, sometimes you can draw yourself. So why just your drawings of your hand? And some people don't like this because they're like, ah, oh, I have to pose my hand, but that's why they're two minutes. So why is this helpful as a gesture project? Well, actually hands and feet are really, really difficult. They look pretty simple, but they can be quite difficult, especially getting them to look right. But also they're right there. You know, you can stick your hand out and you can stick your feet out and it doesn't have to be your face. It's a little less like, and it can be, just right there, you put your hand right out and it's a subject matter that is right in front of you. Um, and it does teach you a lot. You know, hands and feet look simple, but they're quite difficult. I still feel like I don't have a knack with them. I wanna give a shout out to Sonnet. Thank you so much for the super sticker. We greatly appreciate your support. If you guys didn't know, we rely entirely on donations to fund Art Prof. So we hope you guys will consider making a contribution because it's very important in terms of keeping Art Prof 100% free and accessible. Oh, we have a comment from Elizabeth that's really funny that says, I've just done some nostril selfies. Oh my, this drawing will be funny. I'm so happy. Let's all just make nostril selfies a thing. I think they're so funny. Please make a drawing with that and then we can like start a nostril selfie gallery. I think that'll be so fun. Uh, mine would just be a forest landscape. <laughs> oh God, I'm so sorry. Actually, that would be so fun to draw just with a bunch of hairs coming out. <laughs> and like a little lumberjack walking up in. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. <laughs> so what is the blind contour self-portrait, Alex? Can you explain how this gets done? Yeah, blind contour, contour, excuse me. I would say this is the number one recipe for I'm worried about making it pretty because something about <laughs> contour drawings, they always end up turning out really good. And it's essentially you just do a self-portrait and you do not look at the page. You're only looking at your mirror. Or if you take a selfie, you're only looking at the selfie. Then contour, essentially, you do not lift the mark or you do not lift the item from the page. So it's a really good way to practice the line. And I think, again, they look beautiful when they come out. I mean, to me, this is way more interesting than drawing a photorealistic self-portrait from a photo. I mean, yeah, it looks kind of crappy, but... I feel like you have a lot of fun loosening up and you can have an excuse for why it looks bad, right, DT? Because you're like, oh, I wasn't looking at the paper. Of course it looks terrible. I mean, I don't think this looks crappy at all. I think it's so, so cool. And I actually wanted to just note that I went on a trip with a group of friends of mine and I forced everyone to do blind contours. And we were going to just do one round of doing blind contours of each other. Like we paired up. We ended up doing it for like, so many rounds and we all switched off and had different partners and we were laughing so hard. This is so fun to do with your friends, guys. And I have all of them still. I force them all to give it to me. And it's like such a fun exercise to do. And then you have these like crazy blind contours. So it's not just something that like you can do in front of a mirror. You can do it with your friends, have them do it back at you. And it's it's so much fun. Oh, it's even more fun when you do it with a partner because you can like stare at each other, which gets really awkward, but it's really fun. <laughs> yeah, it's an exercise in making eye contact as well. I just <laughs> want to give a huge shout out to Lindsay as well. Thank you so much for your super sticker. We are so appreciative and you're really helping keep Art Prof alive and functioning. So thank you. Now I'm going to guess we've been watching some Netflix during the quarantine <laughs> or Amazon or whatever. And so Alex, why is this such a no brainer in terms of sketching? I think, yeah, uh, in trying to make an evergreen stream, yeah, no, this year has been really big of like, but I have to watch TV. <laughs> like it's, it's fine. And I think that's, it's okay if you 
want to just sit back, relax. Like a lot of people have been commenting, I get home from work or school and I just want to relax. Like it feels like work to have to sit down and sketch. And that's fine. Yeah, sit down, put in your favorite movie and you can just doodle and draw while you're enjoying it. Again, getting back to that high school you that couldn't put the pencil down, just get back to that frame of mind. And you can do this however you want. Some people will just watch for a little bit and then they'll pause for a second and then do like a two minute drawing, then they'll start playing it again. Or if you wanted to take screenshots in advance, there's no correct way for how to draw from a TV or movie show, or it could be on YouTube, whatever. The point is that you begin with the video so that you have some connection to the images. It's not just, oh, I got this off Pinterest. It's like, oh, this is some Twilight Zone episode where these creepy people turn into their creepy masks and they're horrible children. And it just gets you more into that narrative. Now, Dave, tell people about our free reference photo collection on Flickr, which by the way, the link is in the video description below. Yeah, so we have this reference photo gallery on Flickr that just has a ton of reference photos that I think you've shot all of them, right, Clara? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So so a good eye was behind the camera, but we have chickens, we have loofahs, we have vegetables, humans, hands, feet, like <laughs> landscapes. It's, it's kind of endless. And the great thing about these reference photos are there, it's not like the photos you find on Google, which can kind of be flat and not exactly what you're looking for. There's a real variety here. Um, and we actually use in one of our Procreate streams, me and Kat use these to make these like weird alien fantasy landscapes. So they're super helpful and it's all there for free. You guys have access to it. And it's a great way to find references for things that you might not have access to in person. And honestly, you guys, it's hard to find good reference photos online because oftentimes I'll find a photo, I'm like, oh, that's what I want. But then the image is like a hundred pixels. And that is so frustrating. The photos on our Flickr page, they're huge, super high resolution. I shoot them all in my DSLR camera and I shoot them for the purpose of being reference photos. So you guys will notice that actually a lot of the fish photos I don't crop the tail off most of the time. Alex, why do you think that matters to see the whole fish for a reference? It's that whole thing of when you find that perfect reference photo, but doesn't have all the information you need. And here you have not only the detail shots of like, oh, how does the eye look? What are the scales look like around the face? But now with the whole image, you get a sense of scale as well. So from multiple different reference photos of the same subject, you can really get an understanding of it. Now, we also have, oh my goodness, so many draw along videos. And so if you guys are in a pinch and you're like, I don't know what to draw, just go to our playlist. You can go to the draw along playlist and you can do that. Post what you make in the Art Prof Discord. We love it when people revisit old videos. You can tag us on Instagram so we can share with the community what you guys are making. And for each draw along, there's a link in the YouTube video description with the reference photos. So you just click there, you get the reference photos, turn on the video, draw along. I mean, it's ready to go. So I encourage you guys to do this because it's really, really fun to see how other people do that. Now, there are other parts of your artistic self you may want to exercise. So Deep Deep, why are these thinking prompts helpful? Well, a lot of times people have the question of like, what do I draw? And sometimes just sketching and making marks doesn't help you get there. And people think very differently. And I personally like to write out ideas and write things down. So writing might be your way of generating ideas and it can actually unlock a whole different way of thinking or new ideas because you're working in a different way than just visually. So there are so many ways that you can work with writing. It's, it's kind of awesome. And it, takes off the pressure of having something have to look good because you're just writing. We have a question from John Murph about the Flickr reference collection. Yes, it is free. I have changed all the settings so that you guys can download the high resolution image for free. And I have it marked with the, forget what it's called, but it's the one that gives you permission to use the image as long as you credit us. So we just would say, if you guys put it on Instagram, just tag us so people know that it comes from our resources. So here's one where we say to people, just write down something you hear. Like, 
Alex, if I'm watching Jane Eyre, <laughs> and uh, you know, Michael almost died because Jane Eyre saved him from the fire. <laughs> you could write down what you hear, which is Jane fires a terrible death. And she's like, I'm cold, I have to leave. I'm like, I don't know what your problem is. But anyway, yeah. this could jumpstart an idea. Like, do you write in your sketchbook, Alex? Ah, yeah, and that actually, this reminds me of one of the most fun assignments I had in art school where it was a concept class where we each wrote a short story, like two pages long, just not drawn, just writing. And then we traded with someone else in the class and you just illustrated one sentence of that story out of context. And it's really funny how a phrase like, fire is a terrible death, like out of the context of Jane Eyre is like such a bizarre phrase. All right, let's take a look at this one, which is rapid fire drawing. And this was inspired by my daughter because she came home in first grade and she was given these like handouts. It was like a little chart and had just a word in every box. And in school, they have to just draw a picture. So what's the fun about this deep D? Because sometimes brainstorming is intimidating for people. Well, I like that all of these words are so bizarre and have nothing to do with each other and are just kind of like a random group of words. But also what I love is like, this doesn't have to make sense to anyone except for you. And even that, it really doesn't have to make sense to you. But when you say the word tired, we all have something pop into our head. You know, when you say the word chair, we all see something. So it's a really great way of like, you're like looking at a blank page and you're like, I don't know what to draw. I don't know what to draw. Here you have words presented to you. Just draw the first thing that pops into your head when you think of that. And it doesn't even have to actually represent that word. It's just the first thing that popped into your head. And I like this because the square you have to draw on, it's so small that it makes you feel like, oh, it doesn't matter. It can just be some quick thing. And we do have these charts that you guys can download. I think there's like 12 of them. You can just print out the page and just do these quick drawings because it's just a great way to have brainstorming be fast because a lot of us don't think about brainstorming as being a fast process. How about mind maps, Alex? Mind maps? Well, first I would give a shout out to Christine Zito for the $5 super sticker. Thank you so much for your support, my friend. Um, mind maps are a really useful way to kind of, I'd say, push your idea past that first initial idea. It really pushes your concept out and gets you to explore why you want to draw what you're doing. This is good for when you're not just doing a 10 minute sketch, but actually planning a larger painting or study. And what you guys can do if you don't know what to make a mind map about, go to our illustration curriculum for self-taught artists, which has a Google doc that accompanies it and we have a whole list of illustration prompts. You can just pick one off of here. Like for example, one of the prompts is illustrate a Zodiac or one that's about guilty pleasure. So you just pick a prompt off this list and make a mind map for that. So that way you guys have a place to get started. So Deep Deep, what are sketch notes? Can you explain this? Yes, I actually didn't know that I do this, but I do do this after we talked about it. But it's basically like when you're listening to a podcast or you're listening to a lecture, instead of writing down your notes, you sketch them. And it actually, for some people, especially visual artists, help you retain that information better because there's something visual associated with something that's being said. But I mean, this page is a great example of like a way, like there's so many stories created out of this sketchbook that you can like now to use as a jumping off point to like create something a little bit more um full-fledged you can watch any video you want of course we do like it when you guys watch our videos so alex you did this sketch page which is in response to this video and why do you think making it more visual is maybe a little more stimulating than just the typical academic note taking in class i mean it's funny because this is how I took notes in like my history class in middle school. I would take the notes and then do little stick figure things acting it out. And to this day, I can tell you anything about all of those, <laughs> like, because it's just in there. Um, and it's funny for these, I remember these sketches like yesterday, but of course, out of context, I was like, why is the square special? So I should have done notes on it the video itself yeah. but <laughs> yeah. 
yeah, it's a really good way to kind of trigger that brain to work for you. This is a really great comment from Nikolai who says, my mom helps me brainstorm. She just says random things that end up being a genius idea. It can come from anywhere, you guys. It doesn't have to be fancy, doesn't have to be deep. What are that supposed to mean? Whatever it takes. That is my attitude about artistic motivation. It does not matter. Like I had a professor in college. He had his studio in Brooklyn, but he lived in Manhattan. And he said driving to his studio was so infuriating because the traffic was so bad that by the time he got to the studio, he was like enraged. And it got him excited to work. I'm like, cool, bad Manhattan traffic inspires you. <laughs> Fabulous. <laughs> okay, how about collage? Because I think I never thought about collage as being that fun, I guess, because I never considered it, but it can be a great way to jumpstart a project. Deep D, why do you think that is? Well, one reason is because when you're working in collage, a lot of times your materials are already there and the images you're working with are already there. So you just react to what you're already, you already have presented in front of you. And the other thing is that you can just move things around. It's not like you drew something and now you have to erase or start over. It's, you know, it's almost like a exercise when you're like in kindergarten and you're just playing with blocks and like making a structure and then breaking it down and making something new. Um, the pressure is really off of you and you can just react and play with fun textures and colors and see things that you like, cut it out and just use these things in a really low stakes kind of way. And by the way, you don't have to stick to just collage. Like Alex, if I gave you a pen and said, go with this image from this egg carton, like, what did you have fun with that? Oh yeah. And that's, I think that, cause if you're like me where it's like, I'm still dipping my toe into collage, <laughs> like, I think that's a really good segue for it to be like just a creative shape to kind of get you going and get that, those creative juices flowing a little bit better. Now, if you want to do something a little bit more involved than that, we do have a video on visual journaling that's led by Lauren Welch. And I know some people who have like a visual journaling book, like it's that one technique that they do. And there's no rules to this, but Lauren does demonstrate that you do a combination of collage, stickers, drawing. I mean, Deepti, I couldn't believe how brilliant the sticker thing was. Like, it's so satisfying to collage something and put a sticker on top. Like, it's so brilliant. <laughs> I love that. I love that too. Also, stickers are so fun and endless. You can get glitter ones. You can get representational ones. You can get, like, you can get money ones, you know? So <laughs> that's fun too. So it, it puts the pressure off of you having to create something representational. Just use a sticker. Yeah, and so if you guys want to check out that tutorial, Lauren does show different ways to weave things in and out. But I think what I was impressed by with this is that it's not something that takes a long time. Like you throw it on a piece of collage, you put on a couple stickers, you draw a couple lines. I mean, you really could do that in 10 minutes, right? <laughs> okay, now we do have other videos with the self-taught artist curriculums. We're gonna be continuing them in March as well. For example, we have a comics curriculum coming up with Kat Huang that we're really excited about. And remember, we also have these Google Docs that you guys can go through to get more links and resources for how to guide yourselves in your own study. This Google Slideshow is available. The link is in the YouTube video description below. Sometimes it's easier than watching the whole video. And we do have an art prof share today. Now, today's art prof share is from Maria. So let me just read you guys a little bit of what Maria says. And I think they might be in the chat. So let us know if you're in the chat. Maria says it's a stylized self-portrait. And Maria ended up watching our tutorial, which was background tips for portraits. And so Maria says, I learned about taking elements of the background, adding it to the foreground, a little bit, just like the Obama portrait in the timestamp. This was in that video. And so Maria says, I did sort of the same thing with the bird on top of the girl's head and made it just as opaque as the girl with gouache. And then I had mentioned in the stream that in the background of this Obama portrait, these flowers were symbolic of Obama being from Hawaii. And so Maria says, I took inspiration, chose a local flower, which is called Kala Chuchi, 
that I used to see every day in our school's garden, and I learned that it helps to bring out the piece together so it wouldn't look like a cut and paste image as Kat mentioned. Alex, how did Maria do? I mean, I love this piece. And it's so smart of you to realize that the white flowers helps to keep from, as you say, the cut and paste image. Because think of how it would be if it was just the green leaves in the background. It would be just the figure just planted on the background like that. But this, the flowers make it part of it. And it's just such a more interesting composition. Deepti, what do you think? I agree. I mean, I love the personal element of the flowers too. It adds such a narrative to it and something that, you know, is like an extra layer we learn through the artist statement. I also love how the flowers are kind of represented in the dresses, like trimming. There is like a floral aspect there. It ties everything in together really beautifully and just creates a really rich, exciting background for your self-portrait to exist in. I mean, imagining this piece without the background or just a flat color and, and this background, you can already just in your head kind of visualize what an impact and how cool this version is. And Maria is here live saying, oh my God, I forgot I was going to be <laughs> featured. It's awesome. Well, I guess that's a good <laughs> surprise, right? And Christine is saying, I love that portrait. It's even better than the Obama piece. And Orange Cat Spirit says, this is so cute. And Lisa says, since they are the flowers local, it reflects you. I love that because the thing is, Maria, people don't have to know that information to appreciate this piece. I feel like Deep D said, if you take away this background, the whole image falls apart. It just would not function the same way. So those of you guys who are using that excuse of, well, if I had a background, it's going to ruin the piece. This is definitely totally busting up that concept. So nice work, Maria. It's so exciting to see not just you applying the fundamentals from the video, but also you guys, I just love that Maria took inspiration from the Obama portrait. Like that's just so great, but it's really yours. It, it's not like you ripped it off. Like you really took that and made it your own, which is wonderful. So if you guys want to be considered for a YouTube shout out for an ArtProf share, just go to artprof.org, click on tutorials. There's a purple button which will take you guys to the Art Prof Share submission form so you guys can be considered for a shout out. Or if you guys just want to show us on Instagram, we love sharing what you guys are making in our Instagram stories. So tag us and just make sure you use hashtag Art Prof Share. Art Prof has a podcast. It's available on Spotify and also on iTunes. And in a few minutes, Deep D and Alex will be hanging out in the Art Prof Discord. They will be in the post live streams channel. So if you guys want to head over there and chat some more, that would be great. Subscribe to our channel so you can continue to grow and develop as an artist. And thank you so much to our top Patreon supporters. You guys are giving us the resources we need. Alex and Deep D. See our second slide. I'm so excited. I never thought we were going to have a second slide. It's and amazing. it's growing. <laughs> I just want to point out there's a lot of space there for it's a little some left. more knees. It's just kind of tilted to the left. We need to just balance that a little bit. I, I think so. Anyway, <laughs> anyway. Totally off. We need like more names to draw our eye around the whole canvas. Um, so help us out with that, guys. It's a collaborative project we're working on. <laughs> Everybody, thank you so much for watching. We'll see you next time. Bye.